I'd like, to, I'd like to say I could knock out a prime Roy Jones, and if I landed, I probably could have, but 99%, 9% sure I wouldn't have landed a shot. This is Jonathan Agger, fifth pro boxing fans, joined by Enzo Macronelli. It wouldn't be a Wales fight week without you in the building. Uh, I've already already said, are you from? Are you, do you live in Cardiff? And that's not gone down well. But yeah, how you doing? Yeah, like I said, rival territory. If I if I want so hard, I get jumped up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's a big week for, for Lauren Price. Uh, she's done incredible in the amateurs. She's done well in the pro. Barely dropped around. How big is this this night for her on Saturday? It's a massive night. Not just to be a world champion, but let's, let's make no mistake. This is a massive step up in levels as she's been fighting in Jessica McCaskill. It's a it's a, a tough fight. You look at you look at McCaskill's resume: Chantel Cameron, Katie Taylor, Cecilia Broco, Sandy Ryan, Farias who beat Sandy Ryan. Um, it's a massive step up in the levels. Can she cope with it? Yes. You know, she had she had hundreds, well, I say hundreds, load of amateur fights, especially at world level. But this is a pro game, it's a different game. It's 20 minutes, pretty much. Uh, can she win? Yes. Do I expect it to be easy? No. You fought at home, you fought in world title fights. What was like the mentality? Was it? Did it feel like a different fight when you're preparing for a world title fight? I, I was different, you know, I get asked that all the time. I, I just love to fight. I literally just love to fight. So you could you could have put me in a car park, you could have put me in a, a rundown warehouse, which I have fought in. Uh, I just love to fight. So you know, I'm sure I'm sure Lauren's the same. She's been all over the world. She's boxing all different venues. She's boxing little uh, labour club whole shows. So you know, she's going to be accustomed to cope with anything that the, the night brings her. And during your your prime years, you know, Welsh boxing was was right up there. You you know. Joe, yourself, there were, you know, Gavin Reese, there was loads of brilliant fighters. Do you think Wales needs that sort of, obviously we've got Joe Cordina who's, who's doing his thing, but do you think this is the time for a new birth of Welsh boxing? Yeah, of course it does, you know, we've been saying this a long time and, you know, we look at the likes of the Millennium Stadium with Joe Fort, um, Mikel Kessler, who had him in the bill, who had me in the bill, who had Gary Lockett on the bill, Gavin Reese, Bradley Price, Nathan Cleverly, Kerry Oak. What, what a star studying night of Welsh boxing. All Welsh fighters, all fighting in good fights. Uh, and, and these big shows are where you get the new talent, the younger talent, the boys who've just come into it, the novice pros. Start building a little uh, rapport with the, the fans, and they want to see them. And you know, we've got Kieran Jones on the bill, Rhys Edwards on the bill. You know, them two fighters are stand out for me. Uh, and you know, if we can get a night where you have six or seven Welsh Welsh um, fighters on the bill, it'd be fantastic. And then, you know, just touching on, on Cordina, uh, you know, what do you make of him as a fighter and, and how good can he be? He's already won a world championship. Where, where's his ceiling? I don't know where his ceiling's going to be yet, but I'm a massive fan of Joe Cordina. Not just because I know him, he's a, he's a good kid. Uh, but over the last couple of years, his, his boxing has impressed me. Um, you start to stand, uh, stand, stand ground in his shots and throw heavier shots. Uh, and he's looking good. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Joey. I love watching him. Uh, I, I, can, I can watch him live a couple of times and watch him in the amateurs so you know I know Joey very well got a big fight in a couple of weeks um I, 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 I'm biased and I'm maybe biased and going Joe Cordina are going to win on points uh, but let's get let's get things right Andy Kakash is a serious challenge he's no walk in a park he gets hard he's, he's very clever uh, and he's well schooled so it's a, it's a good fight I'm looking forward to it but I'm going to have to go with Joey for the win just want to touch on your old division the cruiserweights uh, when you look at it now is there anyone that you know any of the fighters any of the champions you look at and be like I would have loved to have, have fought him all of them all of them it's not, yeah. not, not one I wouldn't fancy my chance to get but it's their time now not mine let them get on with it I think um, I think the number one at the moment is Opatia uh, I do believe that you know I'm not, I'm not I am being I am being sold on his last couple of fights because he's been boxing boys who aren't really in the top ten in British boxing but, and he's taking care of them like a champion should be taking care of them an elite champion should be taking care of them but next week again I think it's next week he, he fighting Bredis yeah yeah next week um, yeah. that was a close fight the first time I think he run away with the first half of the fight. Brady's come on strong, so I'm interested to see. We got Bill and Smith. The act poses a great fight coming up very soon. Um, Who wins that one? Do you think? I I generally don't know. 
asked me closer to the time when I gave up. I've done setting a fence, but I'm trying to think of who improved the most. I'm a new look at it. They both have. So can can Bellum Smith get inside that right hand? Can Riakmo land that right hand? So you know, it's it's a long way to go. You asked me a week before, and I'd give a positive answer. And uh, just obviously next week uh, we've got Fury against uh, Alexander Usyk. Uh, as we draw closer to that, would you say this is Fury's toughest fight on paper? Uh, on paper, yes, because everyone's making out uh, Usyk is some sort of god. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I like Usyk. I think he's well skilled. He's probably one of my f- favorite skilled fighters at the moment. Love watching him. His footwork, his movement. He's starting start to get a bit bigger now. Um, but I've always said Fury's going to win that fight. And I think Fury is just too big, and not not just too big. He knows how to use his size. He knows how to use his range. He knows how to box like a big man. And by him coming down a little bit in weight, I think it's going to nullify Usyk's movement. Because let's be honest, Fury can move well himself. Um, so it's an interesting fight. But I'm picking Fury. I've always picked Fury, and it wouldn't surprise me late stoppage either. I remember Johnny Nelson used to say, like, when Fury was coming up, he he shared the ring with him. Just wondering, did you have any sort of interaction with him in the gym, or did you ever come across him? No, no. I um, I actually I actually was McDermott's main sparring partner for when he when he fought Fury the first time. So wow. that's as close I got. But I, I'm a big fan of Fury, and like I said, he, he boxes well for a big guy. And uh, you know, if Tony Bellew feels that Fury can struggle with with fighters smaller than him, quicker, and he feels this is the best small man there is. So is that is that a problem if you're a Fury fan? You look at that and say, you know, he could be in problems with that kind of stuff. Tony's right. He, do, he does struggle a little bit with smaller boys, but them smaller boys are normally the ones that spring on him and throw overhand rights and stuff like that, and you know, d- a different type of move. And as for Usyk being the best small man, he is. Like I said, he certainly is. He's got a skill set. He's he's starting to get the punch power as well. But I think all these little feints, all these little movements, which tire people out, which He's, d- he's done over the years, even in the amateur games, he, he tires people out with those little things, those little jinky movements. I don't think he's going to work on Fury. I really don't think he work on Fury because Fury's not going to panic. He's too well schooled. And uh, like I said, would it surprise me if Usyk wins? Maybe a little bit. But I'm going to pick Fury, possibly late stoppage as well. Just uh, two more predictions. Uh, Daniel Dubois against Filip Hergovic. Uh, how do you think that's going to go? That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I think. Uh, I think when when Dubois took a knee against Joyce, um, I pretty much thought to myself this is going to be a long road back. But wow, how good how good is he against Miller? Um, and he boxed Miller's head off. He beat him up. He punched him out. Hergovic is a bit a bit of a beast. I do like Hergovic. He's a bit of an animal, as he likes to call himself. Um, I don't know. I I I probably have to pick Hergovic. Uh, but I'm not really sold on it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and uh, final one, uh, a lot of people saying it's sort of winner stays on uh, Wilder against Gilles Zhang. Is it pretty much whoever lands first, or can you see it going a different way? I don't know. I, uh, Joe Park, Joseph Parker was absolutely brilliant against Wilder. Uh, he nullified his movement, he nullified the right hand, his movement was good. He got a great trainer in Andy Lee. but. It's sort of like making excuses, but it seemed like something was off with Deontay that night because whether you rate him as a boxer or not, he lets his hands go. He's never afraid to let his hands go, even when he's in trouble. Uh, like you showed against Lewis Hodes, he's never afraid to let his hands go. Against Parker, he seemed to be hesitant, so maybe they are... And Alex Scott's trying to turn him into a bit of a boxer, which doesn't suit him at all. He's a powerhouse merchant, he lets him hands go. Uh, Zhang, I didn't think it was great against Parker either. Uh, again, from no excuses on Zhang, it was, Parker was brilliant. But I think he's going to come in a bit like that. I think Wilder's going to come out a bit more old style Wilder, which I hope so. Um, so we wait and see. It, it, it could be a case who lands first. Um, but I go, I'm going to go Wilder. Maybe because I'm a massive fan of Wilder, but I'm not sold. I'm actually just circling back to you for a second. You faced one of the all-time greats uh, in Roy Jones Jr. Even at that stage of his career, what was it like being in the ring with someone that intelligent, that skillful, and, and winning the fight? It was mad. And, uh, you know, I got asked, and they asked me. They see me as an easy touch because he was very active. Uh, I heard he dropped um, Kudyashov in sparring for the fight, which was 
was number two in the world at the time. Um, and we, we fought some of the similar boys and he done better jobs than them, especially Courtney Fry. So they picked me, they knew I was a light heavy for a couple of years, they picked me to come back up the cruiser. Um, and I, I warned them at the press conference, they said, look, you made a massive mistake. Uh, I just knew I had to jump on Roy. Uh, I knew he still he still had his movements, he still had his, his brain functioning well, but I knew he lacked that little bit of speed. Um, and I was fast myself, so I just jumped at him, put it on him from start to finish, uh, and the end is history. Yeah, incredible knockout. But uh, well, I'd like to, I'd like to say I could knock out a prime Roy Johnson. If I landed, I probably could have. But 99 percent sure I wouldn't have landed a shot. No shame in that Not either. Uh, Enzo, appreciate your time and uh, yeah, enjoy uh, another big night back in Wales on Saturday. Top man, thank you, buddy.